Hey everyone, welcome to episode 20, we made it, 20, of Disney Channel Original Newbies. I'm Joanna. And I'm Sam. I was about to say double digits, or double double digits, but that doesn't make any sense for 20. It's the same thing. So, we're still in double digits, but it's nothing new. We have maintained double digits. Yeah, I think we're going to maintain that for a while, is my guess. I think that's a really good guess. All right. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Stay tuned. Keep listening to see if we maintain double digits. <laughs> anyway, today we are going to talk about Sam's favorite movie. That's I right. could tell it was his favorite uh-huh. based on his facial expressions while we were watching it. Yep. From the year 2000. Star Wars 4. Yes. We Oh wait, no, no, that's for our other podcast. I was about to say, do you mean the fourth Star Wars made or Star Wars? No, Star episode Wars 4. four. No, I'm saying the technical terminology. Star Wars 4. You know, like the Star Wars 1, the Star Wars 2, the Star Wars 3. <laughs> all the way up to Star Wars 9 or 10, whatever they're up to. So you're talking about Star Wars episode 4. Yeah, Star Wars 4. A New Hope. No. The f- just Star Wars, just four, first, just regular. The four. first Star Wars made. <laughs> the regular episode four. four. Yeah, we're talking about the regular four. You understand? Okay, uh, ready to run. <laughs> we're gonna talk about the movie Ready to Run. This movie also, like you know, most of the last you know five or six movies we've done came out in the year two thousand. So another Y two K movie, and unbeknownst to both of us, this movie was not about running. It was about, well, I guess it was about running, but there it's not There was running humans. in the movie. Yeah. Humans just, weren't running. Yeah, it was horse running, not human yeah. running. Yeah. So horse running. Mm-hmm. Great times. Yeah. So pretty much from the very first scene, well, not pretty much, actually, from the very first scene, I knew that my prediction from the previous episode was very wrong. Right. Which we'll get into in very, very detailed analysis later on in this episode. So the movie opens up, it's just a bunch of horses, people riding horses, walking around. Wasn't it down like a track, not like a track, it was down a tunnel. like a tunnel, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Opening credits, we see that Sinbad is a, one of the voices in the movie. Did it even say he was a voice or just said Sinbad? And we were both like, Sinbad? I think it might have said with Sinbad or something uh, okay. like that. yeah. Yeah, but just something about Sinbad, and we did look at each other, and we're like, what? I was kind of excited for that, but then severely, severely disappointed over the next hour and a half when I did not see Sinbad once in this movie. And we barely heard Sinbad. Yeah, I don't get... He definitely recorded all of his lines within a 15 minute At most, yeah. He had to redo some things, take a bathroom break. He's a professional. He doesn't take bathroom breaks during his uh, speaking roles, okay? <laughs> let's uh, <laughs> let's get real here. Mm-hmm. Did you ever see the movie with him about Christmas? No. I think it's him and Arnold Schwarzenegger. It could be someone else. But they have to get a certain toy for their kid, and it's like impossible to get the toy anywhere. Is it Jingle All the Way? Yes, I think it is Jingle All the Way. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe I did see that. I've definitely watched that movie Maybe close to going back to before double digits amount of times <laughs> growing up. Love that movie. But alas, this is a different Sinbad movie that's not nearly as good. Spoiler alert. So what was going through my mind at the beginning of the movie? We find out that this movie is about horse racing. Uh, the main character, Corey, is, she's in like a horse racing family. Her dad was a jockey. Uh, her whole family super into horse racing. She's working at a stable. Why didn't Disney Channel air this movie first before Horse Sense? Because in Horse Sense, we learn that racing horses isn't really great and it's kind of abusive. And then they showed this movie about horse racing. Yeah, I mean, I agree. But I would go as far to say they probably should have just not made this movie to begin with. For reasons unrelated to the morality of horse racing, is what I would say, but I don't know. 
Yeah, no, I agree. It's kind of conflicting messages there. Yeah. Uh, all right, so we meet Corey. She's working in the stable. So it's her, her mother, her grandmother, and her brother Gabby, I think was his name, right? Yes. Who I thought was a girl at first when he was wearing the underwear on his head, but then realized it was a boy about two scenes later. I knew that he was a boy. Interesting. And he just happened to be wearing his sister's underwear on his head. Well, I knew that there was underwear on his head. <laughs> I just didn't know if he was a boy or a girl <laughs> at that point in time. <laughs> so point taken. And we know that she wants to be a jockey, but for one reason, which we'll learn later, her mother doesn't allow her to really ride horses. Yet she rides horses a lot, just not she, competitively. Yeah. Her mom is okay with her riding horses. She doesn't want Corey to be a jockey specifically. Yeah. But like casual riding is fine. Right. And, and also I also want to say that I've seen Sea Biscuit, so I kind of know what I'm talking about. I'm pretty sure that Corey was not small enough to be a jockey. And also later in the movie we're introduced to another character, Moody or Mooney. Moody. Mad Eye. Who, yes, Mad Eye Moody. Uh, who also definitely too big to be a jockey. I feel like she's the right size, to be honest. I don't know. Maybe I just have this picture in my head of jockeys being like thimble sized. Well, I used to bet on the ponies a lot <laughs> growing up, which I'm not joking about. And Oh, no, I seriously watched Sea Biscuit Sam. I wasn't oh. joking. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I thought you were joking about that. But I could tell from my experience going to the OTB in the town I grew up in, or the town next to my town, actually, to be specific. Uh, yeah, I think she was about the right size to be a jockey. Although I don't think there were any female jockeys. I think there were only men. All right. Okay. And not only did I bet on horses, I've also been to the Belmont Stakes twice. Or three times, I can't remember, but definitely twice. I've been once with yeah. you. And we saw Triple Crown. We did. That's pretty cool. And we saved... That ticket, maybe? It's somewhere. It is somewhere. It's probably worth a dollar. A winning ticket. Yeah. That we could have redeemed and won more money than if we kept the ticket. No, we would have lost money if we redeemed it. Well, we would have lost slightly less money. It was like we bet a dollar and we would have gotten 50 cents if we won. But you still get your dollar back, though. We would have won money on the ticket. But alas, I'm not worried about that. But we'll find it. <laughs> maybe. Um, I wonder if we could still redeem it. No, there's no way. Uh, <laughs> uh, we also meet a guy named Mr. Machado. I think his name is Hector. Hector Machado. He is the... He, like, oversees the stables, it seems like. Yeah, he uh, he owns his own stables. Right. And he's a horse trainer. Which is next door to where her family lives, it sounds like. Um, we also haven't mentioned any of the horses. So there's one... I mean, it starts off with a race, and there's one, like, really unruly horse who, like, doesn't want to leave the gate and, like, is causing a whole ruckus named Thunder Jam, which is a normal name. No one make fun of his name. It's a normal name. And TJ for short. Yes. He's not good at running. He's okay at being a horse, but he's not good at running as a horse. And, he's okay at being a horse yeah and there's another owner there named garrison what was that garris i think garris garris mr garris and he his horse sucked and like knocked the jockey off the horse well no, i thought that another one horse ran into that horse no i think the horse just like jumped up kind of and knocked the Maybe it was. I don't know. Something happened. Something happened. There was the an horse. accident. The horse came in last and like hurt its leg and well, stuff. It fell. Right. It came in yeah. last. <laughs> yeah. Well, they didn't finish, to be honest. And the jockey fell off. And because it came in last, this guy Garris is like, you know what? I need to at least get some of my investment back on this horse. Let's kill it and get the insurance money. Which that was not cool. No. Definitely not. Yeah. I would say it was the opposite of cool, if I had to say. I had to put a term to it. I feel like... Uh, it was hot. The the kid in horse sense would have been really upset, as was Corey, the girl in this oh, movie. Oh, she was very upset about that. Mm -hmm. She fulfilled the role of the kid from horse <laughs> sense in this role. 
Horse sense, I fight in your honor. I miss horse sense. Um, yeah, so she hears this conversation that he wants to put down the horse, and it's clear she's going to do something to stop it. And she eventually does by, like you said, letting the horse go in the middle of the night. And it, like, runs off into, like, a meadow. But first, it turns it around and waves to her. Like, With, hor- like, like horses like a horse, do. Yeah, like a, a nod. No, like a hand wave. It, like, jumps up and it, like, moves its hoof, kind of. Oh, see, I didn't realize that was waving. I thought it was just rearing. Oh, you don't know how, you don't know what a horse waving looks like? No, apparently not. <laughs> Joanna, come on. Um, I did feel like this was just a weird scene. Like, don't horses kind of wander home if they're let go? Yeah, where's that horse going? Like, what do wild horses do? It's Are not, they... well, it's not a wild horse. Well, I mean, like, horses in the wild, like, do those exist even in the U.S. at this point? Well, we learned in horse sense that, yes, they do. Oh, Come yeah, on, I guess Sam. so. I guess I forgot my favorite movie already. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, she just lets it go. I'm... I don't know why, but I feel like horses do wander home. So it would just wander back to the stable. Um, and she also left the, the thing in its mouth. What is it, a bit? Like she yeah, I guess that's what yeah. it's called, yeah. That that didn't seem great. Yeah, I would have know. taken that off. That's a good point. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Maybe it likes it. Maybe. Yeah. She would know better than I do. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. You know, but after she she lets the horse go... She is deemed worthy and pure. Well, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah. After she lets the horse go, she suddenly starts hearing voices. Yeah. And right before, we didn't get mention of this, I guess, but there's some foreshadowing in that. So we know the grandma loves horses too. So does Gabby, the brother. Um, the grandma bets on horses or at least is rooting during horse races. She bets toothpicks. Yes. And we know that the father has passed away we don't know exactly how yet, although it's very obvious what's going to happen. Because I wrote my notes, oh, he died. Oh, and maybe he, maybe he died while being a jockey. Um, which is why the mom doesn't let her be a jockey. I also wrote in this scene, is this the movie Rip Girls? Because I feel like this is the movie Rip Girls. Except that the dad died instead of the mom. Yeah, doing the mm-hmm. thing that the kid wants to do. And that the parent's overprotective and doesn't let them do that one thing because the the significant other died doing that thing. Slightly different. Yeah, I guess horses are different than surfboards. (laughs) Slightly different in that. um, In this movie, Corey does know how to ride horses. And in Rip Girls, yes. she doesn't know how to surf. Right. And barely wants to, it seems like. Yeah. Like she it's just, just like want... to be rebellious. Yeah. Well, and to be rebellious towards her parents and to fit in with this new crowd. And to get in with that dude. Oh, yeah. Kona? Katona? Katona. Katana. 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 Yeah. Katana was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think <laughs> this is, I mean, going back to that movie, I may have mentioned this during that episode, too. Do you think Kona or Katana, whatever his name is, do you think he broke his hand in real life? And they were like, we got to keep filming. Let's just put the cast on and pretend, make up some story about how he broke his hand. Oh, maybe. Because like, uh, it didn't make any sense, really, I feel. Well, it made it so that he had to be on land and not out surfing to talk I guess. to what's her name. I don't know. Anyway. But, but alas. So, yes, yeah, so you're saying that the uh, the horses start whispering. Did you notice at first that they were whispering, or did you just think it was like background noise? Um, I figured they were whispering because I was. It sounded like background noise, but that would have been very weird background noise. And also, what did I say right before the horses started whispering to each other? Oh God, I hope this isn't a movie where the horses talk. That's a pretty great call by me, right? <laughs> there was zero indication up until that point. That they'd be talking horses. I think towards the beginning of the movie, before there was any indication, you said that you hoped that the horses didn't talk in this movie. That, yes, yes, yeah. very early yeah. on. Yeah. Um, I did notice that in the opening credits, there was some credit that said voice of mm. whoever. But I thought that could have been like, there's a narrator. Interesting. Didn't yeah. know that it was going to be for the horses. The horses. Yeah. Yeah. Did anyone voice the goat? The goat didn't talk, right? No, the goat was just a goat. 
That sucks. I kind of liked it. The goat had a lot of personality for not talking. Oh hell yeah! We'll get we'll get to the goat. We'll get to the goat in depth <laughs> later on. Um, the goat, yeah, goat. So, so the horses are kind of whispering, and this is when I think you mentioned the new jockey is brought in. His name is Moody, and he's a horse riding clown. Yeah, he's in a rodeo. Yeah. How old do you think he was? He's got sweet moves. He was probably 15, 16, it's 17. really young to work in a circus. He ran away with a circus. How old do you think the younger brother was? Like 12? The younger brother? Oh, younger the than that. Like 8? Yeah, like 7 or 8. And how old do you think Corey was? 13 or 14? See, I couldn't get a grasp of when she was 15? like 13 or 18. I just had no idea. Because none of them go to school. I'm guessing this is over summer break. All these movies, it's such a way of doing it. Just make it all over summer break so you don't have to be in school at all. Except for Stepsister from Planet Weird. Anyway, yeah, so, uh, so back Moody to comes whatever to movie this is. <laughs> uh, so what happens? Oh, Hector says he doesn't want him as a jockey because he's a loser. Um, or someone calls Hector a loser. I don't know. Um, oh, no, sorry. The owner the owner of like a track brought this kid in is what it seems like i'm trying to understand the business relationships here yeah it was a little they strange. didn't really it was just like this guy is a business guy and you can tell because he's wearing a suit and he has a business voice right 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 but i don't even know if we yeah, see him weird. in the rest of the movie yeah i don't think we do maybe very slightly um at some point Corey speaks to their grandma about being able to speak with horses and she's like joking around and just like oh wait like actually and then she's like, yeah, it's in our family that you could speak with horses as long as you're, like, getting in with them well. So clearly there's some past in their family mm-hmm. conversing with a... With horses. With horses. Yeah. First, they have to take a trip to Halloween Town and cast a spell. That's right. And then they can come back. And then they become an animatronic skeleton. Yes. And then they come back to life and Dia de los Muertos and they could talk to horses. Yes, I believe that's the scientific process. Not to be confused with the scientific method. No, of course not. Come on. That's, no. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think at this point, there's another race, and, and this is when Thunder Jam just doesn't go out of the gate at all. Yeah, he has uh, he has the pre-race shits. And so, which, to be fair, it, it happens. It happens to the best of us. I mean, I think he just had to pee. Nervous. I think he just had to pee. I I got the sense that it wasn't pee. Okay. <laughs> uh, and also at this point we realized that this guy Garris owns uh, Thunder Jam also, which I don't think we knew at the point. No. Um, it also, based on where the horses were in the stables, it almost seemed like Mr. Machado owned Thunder Jam. It didn't really make much sense. But yeah, at this point know. it's clearly established that Garris owns him. And, and that Garrus is a dick. Well, that's very clear. He wanted to kill his horse for insurance money early on, so it's even more clear now. And at this point, Corey buys Thunder Jam for a bag of peanuts. What are the chances that she happened to have a bag of peanuts in her hand when he said, I would sell Thunder Jam for a bag of peanuts? Well, pretty high. Because like, they probably scripted that she'd be holding the peanuts in that scene. Oh, So I think, yeah, I think that's why they planned it in the movie. I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah. It's really, no, they're like smart. This this makes way more sense now. Yeah, like the writers and the the directors, they're pretty smart. They're pretty, they're pretty good with it. Huh. Now, uh, uh, as a lawyer. No, you can't buy a horse if you're under 18 (laughs) is my guess. I don't know. I was going to say, uh, could she purchase a horse with a bag of peanuts and would that sale be legal without paperwork you probably could do that i don't know if you need paperwork for animals there's certain things under the statute of frauds that you do need to have in writing like buying property and real estate and things like that um or a contract that's going to last for more than a year that can't be canceled within the year but i think buying animals you probably don't need a contract for that you probably have an oral contract all right and so the fact that there were like two other guys there listening to the conversation They'd be the witnesses. We don't need witnesses. I mean, the only time you would actually need a witness is if it goes to trial or something or some sort of hearing. Yeah, well. Then you so, need some testimony about it. So this is what I thought was going to happen at this point. I thought Corey was going to buy Thunder Jam for a bag of peanuts, turn TJ 
into a winning horse. And then he'd want it and back. And then he would want it back. That's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting he even try that. Yeah. See, I thought he was going to be like, uh, you give me a bag of peanuts. You can't do that. We don't have any contracts. This is my horse. That's See, what I thought was going to You're a much happen. smarter villain than uh, Garrus is. <laughs> Apparently. To his chagrin. <laughs> So I guess the writers and directors didn't plan everything out really well. Right. Well, they were just filming at the track, I think. And it just happened to happen at the same time. They happened to meet a few uh, yeah. talking horses and they were like, you want to be in a movie? Yeah. It's based upon Ed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she buys the horse and her mom is not thrilled about it. But Hector steps in and was like, you know what? I'll house the horse. I'll house the horse. I'll take care of it. I'll house the horse in the horse house. That's correct. And she, the mom's like, you know what? Fine. As long as the horse doesn't stay here and you're not a jockey, you could have the horse. You can use this horse for casual riding. Yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Oh, and also we didn't mention before that Corey's trying to buy a house for her family. She's saving up. Yeah. She has like 8 to $12, it seems like, in a box. Yeah, and it seems like she makes like $5 a day working for Mr. Machado. Yeah, Machata. that was like a And tip. I mean, yeah. he's, he seems like a really great guy. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Except that he pays shit. I think he just doesn't have money, maybe, too. It's not maybe. very clear. I mean, it, it does seem like he doesn't have money. <laughs> I think it is it is pretty clear. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. He's... He's I mean, in a, only, a bit of a pickle. Only half the cast calls him a loser, so I don't know. It's hard <laughs> and, to say. Well, the other half, or alludes, don't know, just alludes, don't know him well enough. <laughs> alludes to his financial struggles yes. and lack of winning horses. Exactly. And the fact that he might lose his barn. Right. And I think this is the first like real conversation between Corey and Thunderjam. We'll call him TJ because he calls himself TJ. First real conversation between Corey and TJ, which Hector is there for. And Hector keeps thinking that Corey's talking to him. Classic, classic <laughs> animal talking. No one else. This is the second movie with talking animals. You lucky dog. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you lucky dog and um, can of worms. The, oh, the dog. Yeah. There's two movies <laughs> in the first ten with talking <laughs> dogs. Oh, my goodness. They had to switch it up for the for this one. Oh. And to think Airbud doesn't even talk. He talks with his eyes. Oh, yeah. He's a really good actor. Yeah. Oh, my God. That golden receiver. <laughs> he, he had so many lines, and then he turned to the director, and he was like, I don't need him. Classic. Classic. Mm -hmm. Airbud. <laughs> um, and then, oh, speaking of dogs, this is where a dog pops up in this movie, where TJ just doesn't want to run because he just doesn't care and doesn't think he's good at running. And then there's like a dog, like a poodle, a poodle. Just sit on the side of the track and it just starts growling and chasing him. And then he runs the fastest a horse has ever run, ever. I think he broke the sound barrier. Yeah. It's really yeah. cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so uh, what's his name? Hector sees him running. It's like, whoa, let's uh, let's do this. Let's get this circus freak to be the jockey and let's uh, let's race this TJ fella. To be fair, when uh, Mooney, M Moody was, uh, I guess, auditioning to be a jockey, he had some pretty suit moves. Yeah. Oh, my God. He was fantastic. He was, like, running on the ground while holding on to the horse. Yeah. He was, like, standing on the horse. It was super impressive. Yeah. All while wearing headphones. I'd, I'd go see that show. Hell, yeah. Although I, I don't like circuses, but that's for another day. <laughs> um, We also find out pretty clearly that uh hector is in love with Corey's mom uh, yeah, who i don't think has a subtle. name in this movie i'm sure she does i think it's mom mom oh yeah it was mom yeah a lot of the moms in the disney movies are named, are named mom. mom yeah i think the mo grandma's name was abuela abuelita Ab abuelita little little grandma imagine calling your grandma little grandma i mean one of my grandmas was pretty little well, my, my grandma was like 4'11". I wouldn't call her little grandma, though. It's kind but of funny But would you name. call her Abuelita? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, okay. And this is when... So TJ's afraid of Gates. Doesn't want to go out. Like I said before, Hector's hardcore flirting with Corey's mom. And T 
TJ has to go to like a pony riding, like a birthday party, it kind of seems like. Yeah, it seemed like, um, okay, so TJ didn't want to run and Corey was like, all right, you don't want to run. This is what you're going to have to do forever you're then. Yeah. yeah. And then after that, TJ. TJ's after, like, I yeah. don't want to be a pony. Yeah. I don't want to give little annoying kids with ice cream pony rides. Yeah. I'll, I'll do what you say. I'll put in the work. <laughs> Never put me through this again. That's right. Please. <laughs> and then soon after, we get our first montage. I was just going to say, yeah. Of the movie. Of Mr. Jockey Moody trying Fashion. on jockeying clothing. It was pretty great. Yeah. Everyone Th- was this into was, it. This was a good outfit montage. There's been some bad ones in these movies, but this was a good one. It was, it was very weird, but... But I liked it. Yeah, it was a fun one. Yeah. They did it the right way. Where there wasn't like commentary on every single outfit in between each outfit being tried on. Oh, you're thinking of Wonder Woman. Oh, that was terrible. But I feel like they also <laughs> did this in a different movie we were watching. But maybe not. Maybe I'm just thinking of Wonder Woman. I think you're just thinking of oh, Wonder Woman. Oh, that was Woman. so stupid. It was literally like five minutes. Oh, let's not get into that. <laughs> I can't do this. And yeah, so yeah, at this point. movie montage. Right. And now Corey and uh, Moody are getting along. I was like, are they going to start dating? But then I was like, I don't know how old they are. I don't know if it was weird or not. It was very strange at that point. I think at first I thought, okay, so now he's going to be a love interest. But then nothing happened. And I kind of. Yeah, it went on for too long. Yeah, I don't want to say I gave up on them being a love interest because I didn't want them to be. No, you gave up. You lost hope. Well, I just didn't want them to be. I kind of liked that. In this movie, a boy and a girl are friends. And by the end of it, they're they're opening up to each other a little bit. But in a friend's way, like it's just showing that boys and girls can be friends. And that's fine. Yeah, that's true. There doesn't have to be a, a love angle. Right. Um, we find out soon thereafter that Hector used to train horses for Garrus, Mr. Garrus. Is his first name or last name is Garrus? I thought I think his last name is Garrus and his first name is Mister. Mister Garrus, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we went to the same joke there. <laughs> to Mister Garrus, and that they had a falling out over some issue about a horse. It was like it was a. Wait, big then we issue. get in, then we get into it. Yeah, he just says that off front, and that he quit because one of the horses had a hot hand. Is that what a they hot said? Hot hoof. Hot hoof. Is that mean yeah. like it's gonna freak out? Like I don't. It's like a medical thing? I don't know. Something is wrong with the horse, and it seems pretty serious, but I don't know what a hot hoof okay. is. I'm glad we both don't know, and we both didn't look it up. <laughs> uh, someone in the comments. Yeah, just write into us. Yeah, write yeah. to us. Let us know what a hot hoof is. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, and he tells Corey that it was her dad was the jockey. And so this is the first time she's been 13, 14 years old, for the first time ever, She's learning that her father died because this guy, Garrus, basically made him ride this horse that was having this medical issue. Kind of like how What's-Her-Name and Rip Girls never knew how her right. mom died. Exactly. And she was 13 or 14 or right. whatever. And her reaction, as normally a teenager finding this out, she was in shock. She was very upset about it. Oh, wait, no. She took it incredibly well and didn't even react to it, basically. Yes, very calm. Zero reaction, zero crying. Mm-hmm. Her mom was like, yeah, that's what happened. It was bizarre. Here, have some coffee. It was very uh, bizarre. Yeah. Um, I got the sense that she, obviously she knew that her dad died riding horses and being a jockey. Right. And she might have even known that Garrus owned the horse. Oh, see, I didn't think she knew that. But I guess we don't know. Um, yeah, we don't know. But obviously she didn't know the full story. Right. But there was no, like, revenge angle on this at all. She wasn't like, no. hey, this guy's basically responsible for my dad dying. <laughs> Let me uh, Let me get sh- back at yeah. him. No. But didn't even it need it. didn't even mention it after this scene. No, not at all. They not- could have left this scene out and it would have been the same movie. Exactly. Oh. Just tied some threads together and then just unraveled them themselves minutes later. You just need to make it a little bit higher stakes. Ridiculous. So we have the first race of the new regime with TJ. Um, the other horse that's there is named Cyclone, which is Garrus's other horse, who's like a kind of How lunatic. many horses does Garrus own? All. 
all of the horses except for TJ. He had multiple horses in the same races. It didn't make any sense. Is that allowed? I don't know if it's allowed, but it doesn't seem wise. I don't know. Because you could only win. Only one horse could win. I guess you get other prizes, but still. Like, it seems pretty stupid. I don't know. Eh. 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 Can you name any jockeys? No. So this is one jockey named... Seabiscuit. Toby Maguire. Yeah, oh, okay, but it's not <laughs> uh, There's one jockey named John Velasquez, and he was the only one I remembered because I was just a bet on <laughs> whatever horse he was riding, and I called him Johnny Velasquez. I don't know why that name stood out to me, but I'd always bet on him. Did he ever win? Yeah, he was pretty good. He's, like, really good because he was, like, in all, like, the major races. Like, he does, like, Kentucky Derby, all that stuff. Okay. I don't know good if he still him. does because I was probably, like, 19 or 20 years old when we used to go to otb but it was so fun have you ever been to one before no and like i'm morally against horse racing so whatever but at the time it was like so it was somewhat depressing because there's people like it's all like men in their 40s to 60s and that's it there's no one else there unless it's some guy that brings his wife who's just like miserable in the back you're really selling this as a fun activity i know but like whenever a, a, like a big race is close all the guys just stand up and start like screaming at the screen. Like, let's go number six! Let's go number six! Come on, come on! Number six, no! Uh, oh. And then, like, if they lose, they just rip up their ticket and like throw it up in the air. <laughs> it's great. So, you liked the people watching aspect? Oh, yeah. I barely bet. Like, I maybe would spend like $20 altogether if I went. All right. But yeah, watching people just degenerate people, just like screaming at like projector <laughs> monitors is fantastic. Sounds like a good time. Well, you went, I mean, going to the race is different too, but that was, you're more like in the action there. Yeah. That was an experience. Um. So yeah, so it's race day. TJ and Cyclone are like trash talking. Well, I guess Cyclone's doing the trash talking and Corey could overhear it. Corey could hear all the horses, by the way. I don't think we mentioned this. Yeah. It's not just TJ. She could hear every single horse. She's like a Mel Gibson in What Women Want. That's a great, great example. And Thank we you. love Mel Gibson on this <laughs> show. Um, huge fans of Mel Gibson. Just want to give a shout out to him. I hope he and his wife and his daughter are doing well. Um, I think they are doing pretty, pretty well. I <laughs> Keep going. I'll just be over here. <laughs> All right, so speaking of Mel Gibson, um, <laughs> TJ has to put headphones on to stop hearing what Cyclone is saying, which is cool to put headphones on a horse. The weird thing was I feel like the headphones weren't over his ears. No, they weren't. They were, like, on his temples. Do horses like have temples? A, have you ever seen the meme? Should of... I mention temples that close to Mel Gibson? I feel like I shouldn't. <laughs> you don't want to set him off. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to make him mad. <laughs> Mel, we love you. Please come on the show. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, we'll we'll have you on for a half-court miracle, <laughs> which I think you would enjoy. Okay. Go on. You know the meme of Arthur the Aardvark? Oh, wearing the headphones? Wearing the headphones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. I thought of. That's pretty great. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite Arthur meme? It's got to be the fist. The fist is really good. And it's so versatile. I like the one with DW's looking at the door and it says like, no sisters keep out. And she's like, good thing I can't read. Have you seen that one? Probably, but oh, not recently. I like that one too. But the fist is a classic, I guess. A lot of Arthur memes. I didn't realize that's kind of weird how there's so many of those. Yeah, there are. And like how like other shows that were as popular, just not like does Rugrats have any memes? I don't think so. Uh, there is one of uh, his parents, of Tommy Pickle's parents. Stu, that's the dad. Stu, yeah. When he's like making pudding at midnight and the Dude, mom walks in. Have you watched that video of like the different versions of that scene? No. Oh my God. There's a YouTube video that I used to watch all the time of him just losing his mind making chocolate pudding for Angelica. Nice. Angelica, yeah, Angelica, yeah. not Angela. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. We'll, we'll watch it after. Um, so going back to the horse race, uh, during the race, so he has headphones on so he can't hear Cyclone talking shit to him, and it looks like TJ might win the race, but Cyclone, the dick he is, bumps into TJ, 
and TJ gets hurt and doesn't finish the race. No. Yeah. But he, he's not hurt really bad. Not right, like the other a, horse. A, he doesn't have to be have to be horse. He has some swelling or something. Yeah. Or glue. Something. Take him to the glue factory. Oh. Mr. Elmer's. Oh. Got a new shipment in. <laughs> um. So Corey takes care of TJ. She wraps his, his leg up in ice pack. Do you think the Elmer's Glue Factory? It's like the zebra is their logo, right? Yeah. Do you think it's just a horse that didn't want to get made into glue? Just painted himself black and white? Probably. And was like, I'm going to make my buddies I don't like into glue. Well, I, a zebra for sure, stays alive. I think it, it was less revenge driven and more self-preservation so forget the turn the other horses into glue and more of the i don't want to be glue okay Mm -hmm. but yeah like you said tj's fine he just had some like achilles or whatever horses have issue Corey's talking to to tj and her mom sees it and she's like oh no or not oh no but like whoa she's got the gift she's got the gift of gab yeah the gift of gabby yes Good the, for her. The younger son. Oh my god, do you think this would be a sequel called The Gift of Gabby? You would know better than I do. Well, I've never seen this movie before, so I don't think I would know better than you would. <laughs> well, I mean, even just from looking at the list occasionally oh, of yeah. movies. I'm excited for the next one, but we'll get to that pretty soon. Um, so TJ is okay and he goes and there's like a bunch more races and he's like winning a bunch of races yeah, there's another montage of him just winning 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 yeah it was basically miracle in lean too yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah, a ranking yeah. Uh, situation there and he's loving music and all the people at the racetrack are chanting his name which would never happen um and then after all this there's a party at the track it seemed like or for, it, for the track, not really it sure. It seemed, I think it was an end of season party. It was like a quinceanera for the track, I think. <laughs> yes, the track turned 15. But it was it was just a weird And also the track's party. female. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. To have the quinceanera. A, I mean, <laughs> duh. That wasn't even a question. Yeah, naturally. Uh, just a weird party. Seemed, I think someone said end of season party. So yeah, everyone I mean, clearly, is dancing. Yeah, yeah. And did you then... think before before we get to the part with the mom? Okay. Did you think of the diner that the mom was into Hector? Yes. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure. She wasn't really giving him the eyes at that point. Oh, see, I thought she was giving him the eyes. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I didn't pick up on that. She was throwing eyes. Um. So they start dancing for about two seconds. Give or take. And then there's an announcement from the... The guy. The super owner of the track. I don't know who this guy is. It's it's the guy. One of the dudes. He says that they're basically honoring TJ at the party and that he entered TJ into the Gold Rush Derby. Yeah! The biggest race there is in Florida. Wherever they are. Texas? Florida? I don't know. I thought Texas... Because some people were talking with an accent, but there's really no indication where they are. Yeah, somewhere in the southern United States. Yeah. Oh, and the race is in two days. Yeah. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. So that was cool, too. And it seems like it's pretty far away. Yeah, I, I think. Um, and so Garris is pissed about this because he's like, this horse is not qualified enough to race in this race. Despite the fact that his own horse is going to be in the race. And, like, why does he care? It's not taking a spot from one of his horses. No, but it seems like uh, TJ's on a winning streak, so maybe he's just worried that TJ is going to win. So he's nervous. He's nervous. Okay. that's fair. So what Garris does, which any well-adjusted adult man would do in this situation, is that he tries to kill the horse by lighting the entire barn on fire and burning him alive, along with other horses that are just happen to be in there. Well, yeah, naturally. Yeah. Of course. That's how I... That's how, yes. Like you said, how any well-adjusted man would handle the situation. 100%. Yeah. So let's... Uh, <laughs> nothing so, to see here. Corey senses that something's going wrong because she could kind of hear TJ in her mind. She goes to check it out 
and she sees the barns on fire. And Moody also goes with her because he's yeah. a very, very nice person. Yes. And this is where they were opening up. Uh, Corey started to tell Moody that she can talk to horses, kind of. Um, and he's like, okay, cool. Yeah. No one tried to kiss each other. Nope. Not even, no eyes were being thrown. Nope. It was just like, we are friends and we're talking. That's right. Let's go save some horses now. They go to the barn. They don't really try to put out the fire, but they try to let all the horses out, which is probably a smart decision. I would say so. I mean, in a, a wooden barn full of hay, it seems like getting the animals out would be the smart decision rather than trying to put out the quickly catching fire. Hay is for horses. It is, that's true. It is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. They get a bunch of the horses out, but Moody tries to take the, the is it called a blanket? I never know. Yeah, there's a blanket. A blanket on on the the... horse. He goes to rip it off and burns his hands. Yeah. Pretty badly. Severely. Um, So, yeah, clearly Moody can't ride TJ. Of course not. He's got bandages on his hand. Yeah. So He's looking like the mummy from that other movie we watched. (laughs) All of the movies are coming together. What movie was that? Under wraps. Under wrap. Yeah. I said the word wrap, and I didn't even <laughs> name the movie. Um. So right now, looking like they're not going to be able to race. No. Because Corey, of course, still wants to ride, but her mom still does not want her to ride. So there's some talking between the two of them. And that's a little heart to heart. Yeah. Check. <laughs> That's all decom heart to heart. No overheard conversations, except the mom overhears a conversation between her daughter and a horse. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Um, and the mom kind of overhears the conversation between Mr. Machado and Corey, but then she makes herself known. Yes, I mean, yes she's yes, just like standing true. observing for a little bit. That's true. That is true. Mm-hmm. Does that count? I guess. Well, it's a half point for that. Okay. Two what half our... points. That's a full point. Yeah. I did the math. <laughs> they So they talk about this, and she's getting, she was getting dressed up in her dad's outfits. Was that, or it was at the track, right, when they go? Yeah, when they're actually there. Right. So they, like you said, they drive to the race. Everyone in the town's, like, cheering them on. Oh, we should, we should say that eventually the mom does allow Corey to go. Right, right, right. I mean, she just said no, and the movie ends. Yeah. Nope. Bye. May have preferred that. Um, yeah, so she is at the track. She dresses up in her dad's outfit, and the mom's very happy, Emotion. emotional. Overwhelmed. Yes, by seeing the uh, the father's outfit on her. TJ, in like Miracle Lane 2, at the last second, they're told that he can't wear the headphones, just like Frankie Munez couldn't have the foot brake or whatever, hand yes. brake, not a foot yes. brake. And they're like, that's a bullshit, blah, blah, blah. At the same time, she could talk to horses. He shouldn't be wearing headphones. They could talk to each other. And if anything, it's a, it hurts that he can't hear what she's saying. Well, I just thought of it as a, like runners who wear headphones. But you can't hear what... But it's as if like runners could wear headphones and runners couldn't communicate with each other. And there was one situation where one person could communicate... With a runner, and they wouldn't be able to hear them because I had headphones in. Like, Uh, when you cheer me on at events, and I can't hear you because I have headphones in. Yeah, but, like, what what is she going to say? Run faster. I think he already knows run faster. Do the run better. Oh. Let your horsey feet do them. (laughs) She could say things like that. She could say things like that. Yeah. Number one. Yes. You're good. Good horsey. Be, be it. Be f- once. <laughs> she could do that. <laughs> she could. So, just saying. You make a good point. I hadn't thought of that. Thank you. Oh, and also <laughs> Garris is the one that complained. Of to course. make TJ not be able to wear headphones because he's, you know, nervous that he's going to lose. And the race starts. TJ is very far behind. At least 12 furloughs behind all the other horses. Sure. We'll like go that with horse that. terminology yeah. right there? Yeah. Pretty good, right? I'm impressed. That's right. And then uh, Moody, who is there along for the ride? Mad Hands Moody. Yeah, Mad Hands 
Burt Hands Moody. Burt Hands Moody. Yeah, come on, Sam. Get your character <laughs> names right. Burt Hand Moody uh, takes his disc man and hooks it up to the sound system. Right, where the announcers talking. Yeah. And starts playing the music for... The music's terrible. Oh, the original songs in this movie are all horrible. And they mentioned real bands. I was like, oh, they're going to play some real music. No. No, not at all. No. Just terrible music, which TJ loves. And TJ starts going very fast in terms of horse speeds. A lot of horsepower in those legs. <laughs> Do you think he runs faster? Because he's like, I just want this music to end. You know and what? And I don't That's have thumbs. It. I can't take these headphones off myself. Maybe when I start running, I'll start listening to music I don't like. And I'll have to listen to the whole album until I finish. Oh, you're going to finish so fast. Yeah. I'll play like, try to think what's music that I hate. Maybe like Taylor. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I would never. Um, you take that back. Yeah, so the music comes on and uh, TJ wins the race. Yeah, really comes back from behind. Yeah, like way too far behind. That was a little unrealistic. He but... was saving for the end. Yeah. Oh, and then, uh, and then Cyclone tries to do the, the, the bump oh, yeah, thing yeah, again. Yeah. She cuts inside. Yeah. Like the true genius jockey. First time ever racing. Genius jockey she is. She she has the gift, Sam. The gift of Gab. Yes. E. Yes. Yes. Oh, I wish her name was Gabby. It would have worked so many times already. <laughs> What a bummer. Um, so shortly after winning the race, Corey buys a house, sort of. With with her winnings. Yep. Oh, it's also $500,000 she went from winning this race. Yes. So Which I don't is, know how much uh, she gets versus, you know, Hector, but it's probably going to be pulled together because her parents, yeah. they'd be smooching. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> That's funny, right? <laughs> oh, can we go back to... Uh... To the announcer, well, not the announcer, but to Moody watching the race with the announcer. Sure. Moody's facial expressions were outrageous. They're pretty great. They're on point. They're it, on fleek. I just, I wanted to tell him to calm down. It, I, I wish I could make these faces through a podcast. He was really excited. Oh, man. It was... Can you blame him? He needed to chill. I guess. A little bit. But he was feeling pretty moody. He was feeling himself. <laughs> he was. Sam. So. Yeah. Hmm. And yeah, so after they show like the house that's being built, you also see at the like horse training facility, Moody is like DJing for the horses there. And, yeah, like, all the music horses for like music now. Yeah. Can you name the only animal? I guess it's true. Only animals that could actually understand and dance to music raptors how did you know <laughs> okay now the only one that's still alive um, an animal that can understand and dance i don't know parrots really yeah because hmm. they could like hear interesting and communicate that's cool yeah so this whole movie was a lie yes <gasps> i'm heartbroken you know what? What? What'd you think of this movie? Eh. I didn't really care for it. It was worse than Rip Girls, I thought. Despite having the same premise. I would say it was better than Rip Girls. Oh, oof. Not a lot better, but I I think the acting in this movie was better than the acting in Rip Girls. Oh, okay. Those are fighting words. I did not care for the acting in this movie. I... Didn't either, but still thought it was better than Rip Girls. Would you be surprised to hear the main actress, whose name is Chrissy Perez, or something else that sounds like Chrissy Perez, but changed her name. This is her first thing she's ever acted in. It would not surprise me. Yeah. Pretty cool, right? Mm-hmm. Good for her. Yeah. Should we go to our questions? Yes, we should. Do you want to start or do you want me to start? Um, I will start and let's all right how about you hmm i didn't want this to be a lot of trouble for you <laughs> i'm just deciding what i want to ask first all right who did you ship oh, okay i said garris 
and the horse doctor, the woman that was in the scene for like two seconds. Uh, she deserves better than that, Sam. I only said it because maybe if he gets laid, I'll stop being such an ass to everyone else. <laughs> uh, Sam, what if he's gay? Same thing. You still want to put him with the horse doctor? I still want to just get laid, so he stops being an ass to everyone. <laughs> all right. All Who'd right. you put? Uh, TJ and Hollywood. TJ and Hollywood. Was Hollywood. Okay. Hollywood so was another horse. Was Hollywood the one voiced by Sinbad? Yes. Oh, okay. Because I couldn't tell any of the names of the horses. I was just so confused by it. All I know is that they, I don't remember any of the other horse names, just TJ, Cyclone, and Hollywood. And that's because uh, TJ keeps saying like, oh, there's Hollywood. And the other horses keep saying like, oh, it's Hollywood. Hollywood Shuffle is the Hollywood full Shuffle. name, by the way. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So TJ and Hollywood. All right, that's a fun one. Mm -hmm. What would you change about this movie if you could change something? There's just, I feel like there's too much. There's just. Uh. That's fair. Also, what happened to the little brother? Oh, I guess he was at the end of the movie. He was there, yeah. Yeah, okay. Still chilling. I guess if I, uh, more Abuelita. Yes, she was good. She was good. She was a her. bright More spot. Abuelita, yeah. Okay. I would have gotten rid of the talking horses. I kind of figured that's what you would say. Yeah. It may have been a little bit more boring, but <laughs> just get rid of them. She just could have had a gift of riding horses. Yeah, just been good at it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Anyway. What was your favorite scene? The horse DJing. <laughs> For two reasons. Mm-hmm. One, it was funny. Okay. And two, it was the very end of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> what was yours? Um, I didn't have a favorite scene. Oh, come on now. But I had, I think my favorite aspect was the, the non-romance between Corey and Moody. Okay, yeah. No, that's, yeah. that's fair. That's fair. Mm-hmm. Nice theme. You have heard a theme yeah. in the movie. Yeah. I like that. The theme of non-romance. Okay. And who would you most want to hang out with? Abuelita. Oh, uh, see, now I'm regretting not putting Abuelita. Who'd you put? The goat. <gasps> okay, they both are really good answers. Do you think she could speak with the goat? Abuelita. Oh. I don't know if she can speak to the goat like Corey can speak to horses, but I think she, she has vibe. an understanding. Yeah, she vibes they with the vibe goat. They can vibe with each other. Yeah. That's fair. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's go to our hot seat question. Okay. Uh, do you want to ask yours first or do you want me to ask I'll mine? I'll start with mine. Okay. And I'll ask it and I'll I'll connect it to the premise of the movie, okay? Okay. So my question is, what animal do you trust the least? And my connection with this movie is that I do not, for the life of me, trust horses. Because, like, you have no idea what they're thinking well that no could idea be said whatsoever for other let's not get let's not get into that could be said for humans let's not you get into my psyche let's not thinking. get into my psyche right now that's just how oh. i feel about horses so which animal do you joanna trust the least oh man um deer interesting because they're just sitting eating out on the side of the road and then they pop their head up and you're like oh shit this deer is gonna run in front of me and then they put their head back down and you're like all right it's safe i can keep driving again and then they run in front of you that's pretty great what about you oh it's horses that's why okay. i asked it okay. <laughs> <laughs> um so i guess this kind of answers my question a little bit is just what animal do i trust the least <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I definitely would answer your question. <laughs> no, it's what animal do you trust the second least? Oh, okay. Um, Pelicans. <laughs> Naturally. So a little reasoning why I'm asking this question is, so as we said earlier, basically as soon as the movie started, you made a comment, I hope this movie doesn't have talking horses. And then when the movie did obviously have talking horses you didn't just go oh you like started hyperventilating a little bit 
and you were it seemed like you were genuinely upset and i almost asked if you didn't want to watch the movie <laughs> so my question is what kind of trauma is in your past that <laughs> you're so traumatized by talking horses so i don't think it's specific about talking horses I think it just has to do with I wasn't in the mood to watch a movie with animals talking and the fact that I guessed that animals would be talking and then they started talking. I was just like, <laughs> you got to be kidding me. I mean, like, I like other movies with animals talk. I like Dr. Doolittle. I love that movie as a kid. I used to watch it all the time. Um, I don't know whether animals talking, there's tons, obviously, but I mean, like Lion King doesn't really count because it's like. They're all just... They're cartoons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know what it was. I was just like, <laughs> were, I'm not in the mood for a movie like that. very upset, and yeah. I was a little concerned. <laughs> I may have been playing it up a little bit, but <laughs> yeah, that's just how I felt. I was just like, not right now. Come on. I know the next movie does not have talking animals, so that's a good thing. Okay. So we got something to look forward to. <laughs> I'm going to be upset because I'm going to be in the mood for a talking animal movie. Shame. <laughs> for some background about this movie, or some not really fun facts, but whatever. So it was written by John Wyrick, something like that, and directed by Dwayne Dunham, who also directed The Little Giants. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? Probably. Love when The I Little was, Giants. When I was little. The 13th year. Okay. And something that you like, Star Wars Clone Wars. Ooh. The TV show, I guess it is, right? Just a specific episodes or he just directed the show? A lot of them. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, I don't have much else except, um, like I said, the main girl. It's her first acting gig. And the mother, her name is Sonia Ortiz. She was in the movie Raging Bull, which I asked you before we started if you've seen. It's a very famous movie, which I don't think I've seen. But there's one interesting thing about her. In 1982, mm -hmm. she was stalked by like a super fan. Of Raging Bull? Or... Of her. Okay. Maybe of Raging Bull. Maybe he knew her from Raging Bull. And he hired a PI to look into her. So the PI, like, found her mother and called her. He got the daughter's address, the actress, went to her house and stabbed her. She survived. Obviously, she's in this movie. Yeah, this is in 1982. And it punctured her lung. Oh, my God. And, like, so, like, stabbed her so fiercely, if that's a word it is, right? Forcefully. Forcefully. The blade, like, bent on the knife that he stabbed her with. And like that's so so crazy. What? Right? Yeah. So and she was good. She was definitely a good actress. I thought she Yeah, she did a good job. Clearly a seasoned actress. I thought Hector was not great, but she was, was pretty good. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that is that's all I got. Oh, uh, what about the Alexis oh, Bladell test? Let me get to it. The Alexis Bladell test. Okay. I'm excited now. No one. There's like five actors in this movie. Ugh. And not even Sinbad. Sinbad's not even in Gilmore Girls. Can you believe it? Actually, no, I can't. Really? I feel like if, if anyone, Sucks. Sinbad would make an appearance. I guess what we get from, you know, Stars Hollow being a small town and this movie having like eight actors in it. Sometimes people visited Stars Hollow. That's true. There's some famous people. Yeah. Not in this movie, but, you know, maybe the next Sinbad's one. Sinbad's voice was in this movie. Oh, 100%. He was very in this movie. Yeah. He had like 12 lines. At least. Could have been 13. Anything else you want to add before we uh, jettison? Oh, wait. Prediction. Wait. Yes. So the prediction for this movie was that someone would be running. You were just way off. Oh, yeah. Not even worth was... getting into it. Ugh. The next movie. You ready? I'm ready. Is called Quince. Quince? Yes. Like the fruit? No. Oh. Is it fruit? Yeah. Named Quince? Yeah, it looks like an apple. You think of kumquat? No, that looks like a, a very small orange. But yeah, so Quince. Quince. 
Q-U-I-N-T-S. Quince. Um, I'm going to guess that that is a person's name. Okay. Are they the protagonist? Yes. Okay. Usually, if the name of the movie is someone's name and it's the protagonist's name. Well, not really. We saw the Joker. He was barely in that. <laughs> all right. So what is, what's Quince up to? Oh, right now, all, I just want to say, like, Quince is Brink. Okay. But so just a different sport. He's I don't into know extreme sport. sports. Yeah. Okay. Guess which sport? BMX. Okay. So Quince is into BMX. Yeah. What's his uh, conflict in the movie? His parents are having financial trouble. Okay. Shame. He uh, he joins the professional BMX team. Okay. Does to he get help paid? Make some money. Two hundred dollars a week. Whoa, that's yeah. so much money. Yeah. Does his parents have to sign the contract? Because or no. can he do it himself? He can do no. it himself. No. Doesn't wow. matter. Wow. Fine. Okay. Yeah. What's like? Does he end up you know doing well on the team? Yeah. Okay. But then. So, oh, I forgot to mention that. At some point, he's going to ditch his friends. Oh, okay. I see where this is going. And not, he's not really, he he could just avoid a lot of trouble by telling them what's going on, but he doesn't. (sighs) Okay. So he eventually decides that friendship is more important than money. And he goes back to his old To his old friends, yeah. Wow. And we also find out by the end of the, the movie that his mom gets a raise. His mom got a raise? His mom is going to get a raise. His mom works? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. That's a really specific guess. I like it. (laughs) Thank you. And totally made up out of whole cloth. That's really cool. All right. After talking about Quince, anything else you want to discuss with our, uh, our friends and family in the audience? Well, I will just say, follow us on Instagram. At Disney Channel Original Newbies. You can email us at dconewbies at gmail.com. Yeah, you can tell us what a hot hoof is. You can also send us pictures of your dogs. We love dog pictures. Yeah. Yeah. No cats, just dogs. Oh, you can send cat pictures. But mainly just dogs. Put, but my, mainly, put my name in the subject yeah, line yeah, so yeah. Sam doesn't look at them. That works. I'm yeah. allergic, so I don't. Subject line, cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joanna. That works. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's... Give us five stars. Yeah. And like Rate and us. subscribe. Yeah. Rate us and in the comment on your rating, write what your favorite type, what favorite flavor of pudding is. Yes, that's a great idea. Yeah. I like it. I like where your head's at. Yeah. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye.